In this lesson, we will be discussing how to test and debug a website with ChatGPT. We will cover an overview of testing and debugging websites, techniques for testing and debugging a website with ChatGPT, and best practices for ensuring a website is error-free. Testing and debugging a website is a crucial step in the website development process. Testing involves checking the website for errors, such as broken links, missing images, and formatting issues. Debugging involves identifying and fixing errors found during testing. Techniques for testing and debugging a website with ChatGPT. Here are some techniques to get you started. Use ChatGPT to generate dummy data for testing. ChatGPT can help you generate realistic content for testing your website's functionality. Use ChatGPT to check the website for broken links. ChatGPT can help you identify broken links and other errors that may be affecting the website's performance. Use ChatGPT to simulate user behavior on the website. ChatGPT can help you test the website's functionality by simulating user behavior, such as clicking on links, filling out forms, and navigating through the site. Use ChatGPT to test the website's compatibility with different browsers and devices. ChatGPT can help you test the website's compatibility with different browsers and devices, ensuring that it looks and functions correctly on all platforms. Here are some best practices for ensuring a website is error-free. Test the website regularly. Testing the website regularly can help you identify and fix errors before they become more serious issues. Use automated testing tools. Automated testing tools can help you identify errors more quickly and efficiently, freeing up more time for fixing them. Check the website's compatibility with different browsers and devices. Ensuring that the website looks and functions correctly on all platforms can help you reach a wider audience and avoid frustrating users. Use debugging tools. Debugging tools can help you identify errors more quickly and efficiently making the process of fixing them much smoother. In conclusion, testing and debugging a website is a crucial step in the website development process. ChatGPT can be a useful tool for testing and debugging a website, and by following best practices for ensuring a website is error-free, you can create a website that is both functional and user-friendly. Now, let's head over to ChatGPT for some hands-on practice with debugging and testing our new website. Before we go over into ChatGPT to test and debug our site, let's take another look at our current site. While the site looks amazing and is a wonderful starting point, there are a few things that we could adjust to make our site more aesthetically pleasing and easier to use. So. For starters, we could center our scrolling images. So these images are at this point justified to the left and it would look a lot better if they were centered. We could do the same thing for the text that is in the body of the web page as well. So what we'll do is we will start by going over into ChatGPT and asking ChatGPT to adjust our code to first center our scrolling images. At this point, what we'll need to do is we'll need to copy all of the HTML and paste it into ChatGPT and then re-ask that ChatGPT uh, provide us with the code to center the slider images. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the HTML and I'll say, so I'll say use the following code and provide the CSS to center the slider images. And so with that, ChatGPT will actually look at the code and it will uh, provide us with the code to, to center the images. So ChatGPT has provided us with this code to center the images. 
I'm going to go ahead and copy the code and paste it into the CSS. And let's go ahead and go over to Ripley. So I'll go ahead and paste the new code. And now we're ready to run. And I'll go ahead and open it up. And as you can see, now the images are centered for the slider. Great. Now, the next thing that I would like to do to improve the code is to actually go ahead and center our text. So again, we can have ChatGPT produce a code snippet that will center and align the text. So let's go back over to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to create a code snippet to center the text in the body of the website. Provide a code snippet to center the text in the body of the website. All right. So ChatGPT has provided us with an additional line to add to the body, which is simply a text align center. So we're going to copy this code and we will paste it in the body rule set over in Riplet. So I've copied it and now I'm going to scroll up to the body, which is here, and I will paste the new declaration and click run and now as you can see our text has been aligned and it is now centered on the page and so at this point um, the thing that stands out that i would like to adjust would actually be the list items because they still have bullet points on them so i would like to remove the bullet points from the list items and I think I would like to have a new layout for our product section. So uh, the first thing that we'll do is let's go ahead and ask ChatGPT to provide a code snippet to remove the bullet points from our list items. So let's go ahead and go back over to ChatGPT provide a code snippet to remove the bullet points from the list items. And as you can see, ChatGPT has provided us with a code snippet that will remove the bullet points from the list items. So we're going to go back over to Riplet and we will paste this new code into our current CSS. And at this point, I'm pretty much looking for something that has to do with list items and it's been placed in the overall section of the page um, of the CSS. And so I'll go ahead and add this updated code to our um, List And so here, to prevent the repetition, I'll go ahead and cut this and just add it to this selector uh, list. So here, anything that is in this rule set will be applied to the unordered list and the ordered list. So I can go ahead and remove these. And as far as the list items go, um, I don't think I need them to be to have this padding. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it on its separate rule set and I'll go ahead and run. And then let's open it up so we can see what it's looking like. All right, so the bullet points are gone. And the next thing that I would like to do at this point is to Go ahead and let's add, let's put our product section in a card layout. So in order to do that, 
we'll need to copy the HTML. So I'm just going to select everything and copy. And now we'll take this back over to Riplet or actually to ChatGPT. And we will paste it. And before we do, we'll say use the actually because of the fact that all right, this will probably work. So we're just going to tell it to use the following code to add a card layout to the product section. All right, and here ChatGPT is now reorganizing the product section of the code. And here, the good thing is that it's we provided it with the code and um, it already has the exact images. So we don't have to drag and drop or we don't have to cut and paste new images into the scene or redo the work that we've done. And actually, we could have probably just requested or just copied the products section and requested it that way. However, we, you never know what chat GPT would need to adjust. And in this case, it's added the container to the inside of the section, which is great. And so being that it's going to adjust it in this manner, we were able to, we could have just copied the section and only copied the product section and pasted it into um, the input. However, chat GPT has paused, actually stopped. And we're going to need to request that chat GPT complete the code. And we will try to request that it starts with the herbal supplement H4. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And this time we'll regenerate the response. And it has still forgotten the request. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. And I'll need to, um, starting with the H4 and now I will comma and so I've pasted the code back in and requested that it complete the code starting with this H4. And let's see if it did. So it actually looks like it may have, okay. It did, it did, awesome. So this time it actually worked. So we can come and I already have the code copied. So we can go straight into chat Riplet and paste the code, paste the new code. I'll have to uh, remove, actually when we paste the new code, we can keep everything else, but we'll just be pasting the product section. Here is the product section. I'm going to delete the old section and paste in uh, the new section. Let me get rid of that. Let me come back and copy. And here's where we'll paste it. And then it, uh, it offered the completion. So I'll go ahead and grab the second section. I'll copy and paste. And let's just come back to make sure that everything looks good. So here's the section. Yes, 
this looks great. I'm going to go ahead and run. And at this point, we only have the, um, we actually only have the HTML. So nothing's going to show up. However, um, the next step is going to be to ask for the CSS for the card layout. So we've pasted the HTML. And now let's go back over to ChatGPT and request the CSS. Provide a code snippet for the CSS of the product section card layout. And here, ChatGPT is has provided us with the CSS. So we're going to go ahead and copy the code and we will paste it over into Riplet. So We'll come here, go over to the CSS. And at this point, there is no product section because this is a new layout. So we can simply come to the bottom of the CSS and we can paste our new uh, CSS. And we'll just add a comment. Let's say product card section, and I'll comment this out and click run. So let's see if it worked and it did. We now have some amazing um, cards in this section. It looks really good, but we do not yet, we can no longer see our images. So we'll need to now actually do a couple of things first let's ask uh, chat GPT to provide a code snippet to make our cards responsive so we're gonna go back over to chat GPT and we'll request a code snippet to make the card section responsive and that will simply make the cards for example if chat gpt was to add um, a flex display and then add a flex wrap to that section when we make our screen smaller instead of the cards uh, getting so small that the text no longer fits a card would just drop down beneath and they would start to go into a row format. So when it got too small, the cards would drop down and they would ba basically wrap um, on the page. But let's see what solution chat GPT will have. So let's go back over to chat GPT and make the request. Add a code snippet to make the cards in the product section responsive. Okay, and in this case, ChatGPT has chosen to go with the media query option. And this basically will cause the cards to uh, change, the layout to change, based upon the screen size. So when the screen size, so the max width for this small screen is uh, 767 pixels. And when it goes beyond that, it will adjust to whatever is inside of this media query. And in this case, um, the margin bottom and the width will change. And that goes for all of the media queries. So we're going to go ahead and copy this uh, media, the media queries, and we will take this over into Riplet, and we will paste our media queries at the bottom of our CSS. And here is where we will run the code to test it. So at this point, you can already see 
that the cards, this card has dropped down to, there we go. So this is beautiful. So as the screen size adjusts and it change, changes, the cards will adjust as well. Great. Now let's find a solution to our images because three of the images were lost for some reason. So we're going to go back over to the HTML and we'll start by looking in the product section and the multivitamin image works well. However, these now have um, ellipses so their addresses are no longer complete and that is what the problem is however um, since this lesson is about debugging let's go ahead and grab the product section and we'll take the whole product section and copy and we'll take it over to chat GPT and tell it to debug the code. So we are back in chat GPT and we'll say debug the following code. And here we'll just paste the code. And at this point, chat GPT will just check to see if there's any errors or any reasons that it may not work. So it says uh, there seems to be an error in the code where the image source attribute um, with the Im image source, source attribute in some of the image tags. So some of the image tags have an extra quotation mark. Additionally, um, there is no uh, issues with the code in terms of syntax. So ChatGPT is now offering the corrected code and apparently there was an extra quotation mark on some of the image uh, sources so that's great that means that we can simply copy the code that chat gpt has provided us with and paste it into our new code. And actually, since it's just, since it told us what the problem was, I'm not gonna waste time having it regenerate the code starting here. I'll just remove the quotation, the extra quotations from the actual code, and then we will run it. So let's go back to Riplet and I have gone through and removed the extra quotation marks. And let's go ahead and now run the code to see if that corrected the problem. Okay, so while there were additional quotation marks on the images, again, the images um, are still not showing up. And again, I believe that it is because of the way that we have had to copy the image addresses. So if you look at ChatGPT, let's go back over to ChatGPT, you'll notice that the addresses are actually complete on ChatGPT. So here, it completes the entire image address. Uh, here it's complete, here it's complete, and here it's complete. And here on the next one, it stopped before it could complete it. However, um, so for ChatGPT, it is correct, but in our code, it is not because the image addresses are not complete. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab the image addresses 
and I will paste these image addresses back into the into the code. All right, I have pasted in the new image addresses. They are now complete. So let's go ahead and run the code to see if it works. And yes, we now have our images back and we have had ChatGPT um, debug the code and it has provided us with the solution uh, to make our card system responsive. So this is awesome. And the next thing that we can do is, let's see, we've got product categories. That looks okay. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the next thing we can do is we could ask ChatGPT to suggest a layout for the article section. So let's go back over to ChatGPT and have ChatGPT suggest a layout for the article section. Suggest a layout for the article section. And as you can see, ChatGPT is now providing us with a layout for the article section. However, I've noticed it says a brief summary of the article content goes here. So that means that ChatGPT did not use real world information. And so I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'll do is copy the article section of our uh, website and that's actually the resource section so the articles are in the resource section so I'm going to copy the resource section and I will say use the following So use the following code to create a new layout for the resource section. And I've pasted that code for the resource section. And now it is giving a, a new layout. As you can see, it um, did not add these first three lines into the code snippet. So that is something to be aware of. And it is now completing a, or creating a new layout. And it also did the same thing here. Okay, so it's actually um, divided it into four resource type sections, which is great. And now we need to ask ChatGPT to provide the CSS for the new layout. And while it's creating that, I will copy this code. And we're going to have to be careful with how it's copied because it is not the whole uh, code here. So I'm copying these three lines, then I'll copy the rest and paste, and then I'll copy the last two lines and paste. All right, and here it has provided the CSS and it says that this CSS should create a clean and organized layout for the resource section. All right, so it's telling us how it is uh, set up. Let's go ahead and copy the code. Now we'll go over to 
riblet. I've already pasted in the HTML. So I'm just gonna hit run and we'll see what it's looking like right now. Pretty much looking the same. Let's come over to the CSS, however, and it will come before the media queries and paste the CSS to see if we now have new section and we do. This looks pretty cool. So it has made it so that when you hover over each section, it will basically highlight the section that you're on. And these are now not just links, but they are looking more like elements that we can click on. So I think this is a lot more user friendly. And at this point, I wouldn't mind having an image for these resources. So that would be a pretty good thing to offer us to add next. So let's go ahead and let's ask ChatGPT to rewrite the HTML for the resource section to include a space for images for each item. Rewrite the HTML for the resource section Rewrite the HTML for the resource section and include an image element for each item in the resource section. Perfect. It knew exactly what I was talking about. So it has now added the image element to all of the resource items, which is great. So now we can simply find images and add them to our site. So a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention is that in this activity, we have used ChatGPT to debug our code um, a couple of times. And in order to do that, just like you would use an a, um, HTML validator or a CSS validator, you copy all of your code, paste it into ChatGPT, and ask that it debug the code. And in our case, this helped us identify our first problem, which was that we weren't able to see our images on our cards. So if you have other issues, however, ChatGPT can very quickly identify the problem and offer a solution. So in this case, it looks like uh, ChatGPT has paused. However, um, I'm comfortable with where we are in the code and we did get to use ChatGPT to debug our code and also to offer a solution for our card system and make it more responsive. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here and let's go back over to the lecture to see what's next.